Welcome, everybody. Oh, thank you. Right. Um, welcome, everybody. We have a nice full room here um, and a few on Zoom, too. Um, we are in the Amida. We are at the, uh, is it the 11th Bracha? Yes, the 11th Bracha, um, which is called, interesting what it's called here. What's it called in your book? Or um, Hashiva Shoftenu. Okay, so in in the um, in the Rabbi Sachs translation, the title of the bracha is called Justice. Anybody got anything else there in English? Ah, okay. So these are art scroll. Uh, okay, so Warren tells us that restoration restoration of judges. Yes. That's in that's art scroll, <clears throat> and in the uh, Renat Yisrael, it has the Hebrew equivalent, Hashavat Hamishpat. Yeah, Hashavat Hamishpat. Says what? Does it? Oh, that's good. Right. Okay. So the Hebrew, the Hebrew title in art scroll is Diane. Diane, that's interesting, because we, we have in our uh, Rinat Yisrael, Hashavat Hamishpat, which means the restoration, the returning of justice. Okay, so um, it is a strange bracha, this. Again, uh, uh, each time we come to a bracha, I say, this is a strange one, uh, because when you look at them carefully, which we haven't really done for the last X number of years, um, you see that, that there's lots of things that, that strike you as being odd. So we're just going to, first of all, say the bracha, translate it, and then we will, as we usually do, point out the things that are a bit strange and odd and need to be questioned, and then see if we can answer the questions. Okay? So, hashiva shoftenu. What does that mean? Hashiva. Return our judgment. Return our Judges, ke va rishona, ke like as at, the beginning. as at the beginning. Okay, so there's our first question. What does that mean at the beginning? Okay, don't answer me now. We're going to go through the questions. By the way, it's very interesting. Somebody once told me. Anybody ever hear, learned al sheikh here? No, the al sheikh, Reb Moshe al sheikh lived, I think, in about. Was it Rabbi Balkin's favourite? I think. Yes, he was Rabbi Balkin's favourite. You're quite right. Um, I learned the Al Sheikh actually with one of Rebbe Bolkin's pupils, with Re with Yehuda Yon and Rubinstein. Um, so um, anyway, he's a it's a commentary on the Torah, yeah, you know, like Rashi and Rashbam and it's, it was Moshe Al Sheikh, and he has a particular style of um, his commentary. He asks a question, but instead of asking the question and giving you the answer, he asks a whole bunch of questions. And then he gives you a whole bunch of answers. The problem is that a lot of people read al Sheikh, learn al Sheikh on a Shabbos afternoon, and you get through all the questions. And by the time you get to the end of the questions, you've fallen asleep. And so you wake up, <laughs> and then it's time to go to Mincha. So what happens is that those people that learn al Sheikh on a Shabbos afternoon become apikorsim, because all they're left with is questions. You never get any answers. <laughs> so that was always a very uh, a common uh, uh, complaint about the style of the al Sheikh. So we're going to do al Sheikh style today. We're going to do all the questions first and then go back. So the first question is, return our judges as at the beginning. What does that mean? The um, yo'atzenu. What's a yo'at? An advisor. An advisor. Or a counsellor. What did you say, Johnny? Uh, no, counsellor is it's translated here. Yeah, counsellor. A counsellor. Advisor. Or an advisor. Yeah, yo'at. Um, so uh, I've been spent all day today on the phone with a Yoetz Mashkanta, a, uh, a mortgage advisor, trying to organise stuff. Um, um, uh, Yoetz means an advisor. So, but Yoetz Seinu and our advisors or counsellors, Ke Vatechila. Like in the beginning. Another expression for at the beginning. Ke Vatechila is the beginning. So what have we got so far? Re restore our judges or return our judges as at the beginning. 
And our councillors, um, as no, sorry again, so re return our judges as at the first, and our judges and our councillors as at the beginning. Again, we've got the same question. What, what are these expressions mean at the beginning and at the first? Vahaser mimenu and remove from us yagon. What's yagon? Yes, sorrow. Sorrow. Yeah, yagon is sorrow. Um, Va'anacha and anacha. Groaning. Groaning, yeah, groaning. Anacha is groaning or sighing. Wait a minute. What's what's that got to do with justice? Remove our sighing and 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 uh, sorrow. Okay, that's another question. Umaloch aleinu, and reign over us. Ata, Hashem, you are Hashem. Levadecha, alone. Bechesed uvarachamim, with kindness and mercy. What's that got to do with justice? That's the opposite of justice, isn't it? Everything. Well, then it's not justice, then, is it? Rachamim, by definition, is mercy. Mercy, by definition, is not justice. Why not? It's not justice, then, is it? So, um, so that's a bit. And there's some compassion. Compassion. Yeah, compassion. Okay, compassion. I think you can. I think you can meet out justice with compassion. I'm not sure you can be merciful and be just. I don't know. We'll, let's, we'll, we'll talk about it. These are all good questions, right? Mm -hmm. um, How did you read the Potter? Umalach Aleinu. What did you say, Johnny? Umalach Aleinu Ata Adonai Levadacha Bechesa. Our school has got the word Mehera speedily okay. after yeah. Aleinu. Yeah. yeah, we don't have that in the uh, Rinat Yisrael. Do you have Mehera in? No, the, the sax doesn't either. Is in the room, not in my one. Yeah, yeah. I've not, I've not got, I've got both. I've got in front of me. Oh, I've got, I've got. It's in the Quran as well, Johnny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's, I beg your pardon. In the Nusach Sfard one, Mehera is there. In the Nusach yeah. Ashkenaz, Mehera is not there. Yeah, okay. Okay, it means speedily. Okay. Uh, Melech, oh no, we're not finished that now. Okay, so umaloch aleinu atad donai levadach bechesed rechamim, and reign over us, you Hashem alone, with kindness and mercy, v'tzadkenu. Without looking in the translation, what's that mean? Tzedek. Okay, what does it mean? V'tzadkenu. And be just to us. Bamishpat. Yeah, that's. No, You've got Sfad. I've got Nusach Ashkenazi. Okay, we will do the Nusach Sfad in a sec. Let's stick with the Ashkenazi. Just for us in your, sad in your What does Sad Kainu mean? That girl says, justify us. Justify us. Sad Kainu. Oh. Do Tzedek to us. So, what do we. How, if I was just to say the word Tzedek. No, Tzedek's not right. Righteousness, yeah. Tzedek is righteous, not justice. What's justice? The next word is justice. Mishpat. Mishpat is justice. Mishpat is a sentence. What's the, the verdict? Mishpat. What's the verdict, Faye? Mishpat is a sentence. Mishpat. Yeah. It's a verdict. Mishpat is a, yeah, it can mean all sorts of things. But uh, it means it can mean the verdict, yes. It can mean the case. So... Let's just translate the whole thing uh, um, in one go. Restore our judges as at first and our counsellors at the beginning and remove from us sorrow and sighing and rule over us, you, Hashem alone, in kindness and mercy. And he says, and acquit us, make us righteous, acquit us in judgment. Blessed are you, Hashem, Melech Ohev, the king who loves Daka, righteousness, umishpat, and justice. Vindicate us. Vindicate us. Okay. Vindicate, acquit us. Similar. Vindicates, I think, are slightly different. I agree. Okay. Acquit. Well, no, you, if you're acquitted, then you're not guilty. So not letting off. Letting off in 
letting off implies that you did it, but I'm letting you off, uh, even though you did it. Um, so let's, let's, let's just have a look uh, and see what all our questions are. Yeah, we do. We definitely have to define what we mean. The one question I want to ask you is this. What is this bracha about? Because one thing it clearly is not just, pardon the pun, about is justice. Because we've got chesed, kindness. We've got rachamim, mercy. We've got tzedek, righteousness. We've got mishpat. We've got justice. These are all different things. All right. Very good. Frank says Torah values. Yes, Jonathan? Doing the right thing. Okay. Doing the right thing. That's that's a good one, too. Um, let's start at the beginning and see... Um, where it takes us. Hashiva shoftenu kavarishona. Restore our judges as at first. What do you think as at first refers to? Okay, Paul says the original judges. Which original judges are you talking about, Paul? From Joshua. Okay, so Paul says okay so paul says well one sec one sec i will ask you ask, ask your question in a minute paul says that the shoftenu our judges is referring then it says to the first ones kavarishona as at first the first judges and he says those first judges were the judges with a capital j i suppose meaning the leaders of the people that's what you meant right Hannah has a fair point, and he, she says, well, they weren't the first judges with a small j, because they were the, the first judges were appointed by Moshe, right? After Yitro comes along and says, you can't do it on your own. Um, and um, he says, uh, you need to appoint ju judges. So that's a fair, maybe those are the first judges that we're referring to. Um, any other suggestions as to what this means, Kavarishona, at the first? That's girl suggests Sanhedrin. Okay. The, the Sanhedrin? Well, well, um, it, 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 I, I have to say that when I first looked at this, I thought the Sanhedrin too. However, it clearly is not the Sanhedrin because they certainly were not the first judges because Paul's given us some earlier judges and Hannah has given us some even earlier judges. So I also thought that that meant Sanhedrin at first, but on... On, on a bit of thought, I don't think it means Sanhedrin. Yes, Barbara. Barbara's got a question. But when was this written? Because obviously it's in a time when the judges were not so great. Because he wants to Okay, so it was written by the Anshe Knesset Agadola yeah. towards the end of the Second Temple, when in fact there was a lot of corruption. So that's a fair comment. So the original judges, you still not answer the question. Any Any other suggestions? Okay, so that, that's what the bracha is about. I think that's the answer, but we've not got there yet. That's what you just did there, uh, uh, Paul, was you just answered the maths question without showing you're working, right? Uh, you, you got to the right answer, but I want to see you working. Else you get, only get half marks when you, when you do that. So we, we, we will end up, I hope, uh, with that conclusion. But we need to get there first. So I yeah. read. Yes, Johnny. I'm only telling you what Arts Girl says. When Eliyahu, when the Mashiach comes, the first thing he will do is will be to re-establish the Sanhedrin. Then the redemption will begin. All right. Very nice. But I don't think that I don't think that yeah. uh, uh, helps us in our. I mean, I don't doubt that that may be true, but it doesn't help us with our question here. Kavari Shona. I I read this from Rav Ezra Bick uh, this evening. And um, he's one of the um, rabbis from the Gush. And he suggests something which absolutely amazed me. And when he did so, when I read it, I thought, that's fabulous. And I never saw it coming. So I'm going to show share with you what he says. Um, so he says, uh, OK, first of all, we've got to do the next bit. He's a rabbi in the Gush in, in Ezra Bik. You know, as in Biro, except with a K on the end. Yeah. Uh, so it goes together. But you are saying, huh? 
He is Monai, Yeshua Haritzion, yeah, correct. Um, so he says like this. Um, he, he, he suggests to us that the um, original, the very original judge, if you like, the very original person who was interested in justice, who was a very original person who is interested in justice? Who is the first person that we come across in the Torah who seeks justice? Moshe. Abraham. Abraham. Yeah. And where do we find that, Jeff? Yeah, in the whole episode of Storm and Amora, Sodom and Gomorrah, where God says, I'm going to destroy this lot because they're evil. And what does he, what does Abraham say? He says, I can't do that. I can't, I, you can't do that. You can't destroy the Sadiqim with the Rashaim. You can't destroy the good people with the bad people because that's not justice. Abraham says, you can't do that. And he has this whole negotiation. If there are 50, if there are 45, 40, etc. In the end, there aren't any. So it was okay. But there weren't any. But he was not interested in having a situation where, and uh, not interested, Avram could not um, stand, if you like, couldn't, couldn't, he couldn't, uh, he couldn't abide a, a scenario where there was no justice. And what does the Torah actually say there? Let's have a look in Bereshit, chapter eighteen. I'll just put it on the screen and then I'll read it out to you. Chap Bereshit, chapter eighteen. Let me just get it up there and then I'll share it. One sec. Bereshit, chapter eighteen. Uh, and it is verse 17. Uh, it's in the parasha of Vayera. And it says like this. First of all, let me share the screen with you people uh, on there. Well, it says like this. Okay. Um, and Hashem said to Abraham, Hashem said to Abraham, Yom Hashem, Hashem said, Should I conceal from Abraham what I'm going to do? Abraham's going to become a great nation. Uh, and he's going to be, uh, uh, he's going to be through, through him will be blessed all the people of the earth. Because I know, I know, says Hashem, he will command his children and his household after him, the Shamru Derech Hashem, and they will keep the way of Hashem. Next words, gentlemen in the uh, in the room and ladies. Very good, close, close. It's a good guess. Lasot staka mishpat to do just uh, righteousness and justice. Laman havi Hashem el Avraham et Ashedibe Allah, in order that Hashem should bring upon Abram that which we spoke about him. So the whole reason that Hashem, as it were, engaged Abraham in the discussion about what he was going to do to Sodom and Amorah was because he knew that Abraham was really hot on Sedek and Mishpat. So the very first person that we see who is uh, and concerned about, super concerned about mishpat, justice and righteousness, shown by his concern even for the evil city of stone, is Abraham. And what Rabbik wants to suggest is that when our bracha says, um, Hashiva Shoftenu Kavari Shonam, the first one, return our judges like the first one, he means Abraham. So, what was Abraham's big thing? Not just chet, not just uh, sakat and mishpat. What's the main trait we think of with Abraham? Chesed, chesed, kindness. Okay, kindness. And that's why this whole um, this whole bracha is all a bit of a mishmash. It's a mishmash of justice, and like we say, it's a mishmash of justice and chesed and rachamim and and mishpat and tzedek and justice justice tempered with kindness and and that is very important because we have a very famous pasuk don't we in 
Parshat Shoftim, not Sefer Shoftim, the Parsha of Shoftim in the book of Devarim. Go on, Paul, Tzedek, Tzedek, Tirudov. Justice, justice shall you pursue. It's a statement from Moshe Rabbeinu to the Jewish people saying that you shall pursue justice. But not just that you shall pursue justice, but you shall pursue justice in a tzedek way. In fact, he doesn't say justice, justice, you shall pursue. That would be mishpat, mishpat, tirdov. It says tzedek, tzedek, tirdov. Righteousness, different to justice. Justice on its own, elokim, right? We know elokim, the, the, and the, 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 we need to define what we conceive of as justice, because when you say it's not, it's not it's, uh, you're talking about din. Yeah, and din I'm about is din. not just necessarily justice. Din is the law as it's written, but very often you can get situations where the law as it's written is not just. Okay, so the law is an ass. Mm -hmm. On, okay. occasion, on occasions, yeah. Who was it that said the law is an ass? I don't know. It's a famous expression, isn't it? Was it? Okay. I, I, my Dickens is is my Dickens is a little bit rusty. Um, so anyway, the 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 uh, yeah. The beetle in Oliver Twist. The beetle in Oliver Twist. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, Harry Seeker. Harry Seeker. Right. Okay. We digress. We digress. My fault. My fault. Okay. So uh, Hannah's saying that justice is the din is not necessarily always just. The law can sometimes not be just, and I think that's actually exactly the point. Sedek sedek tirdov means exactly that. Pursue the justice in a righteous way. In other words, uh, if you go, uh, if we, if we've talked about Dickens just now. Let's think about a second about Shakespeare. What was the whole Merchant of Venice business? That Shylock wanted his pound of flesh, right? Because he was owed a pound of flesh. And the truth is, justice stated that he was entitled to a pound of flesh. No, the law said he was entitled. Okay. The justice, the justice entitled. as the law seems, okay? No, you're, you're, you're going one step further, Hannah. You're saying that justice is what we are ending up with. But when we start the process, we have to start with a law. Justice is a misnomer. Okay, well, that may well be, but that's the way it is. Justice, so we, justice we're, is the right... Anna, we're arguing about semantics here. Justice, pure justice, is what the law says. That's where we're starting. Well, we're now, okay, you can disagree as much no. as you like. Right. Right. No, law is justice on its own. That's why Elohim is called the, uh, the, the name of God when he has his hat of justice. And the Gemara tells us that the world could not survive on pure justice. On pure din. OK, you can call it what it like. We're, we're going to use the word justice. OK, we're going to use the word justice for that what you want to call din. OK, that's fine. Yes, Frank. Okay, that's a fair point. Right, so Frank says... It was before that, at the creation of the world, when the moon comes to the sun, according to Israel, it says you can't have two luminaries the same, so God says, okay, I'll agree, you... Okay, so okay, right. Frank says, Frank says that 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 Kavari Shona is the very first, i.e., God. Now let's take just take your example uh, of Gan Eden. Okay, um, I when you say to me that what we're talking about, we're talking about well, they got punished for doing uh, an avera. That was there was a there was. It was the punishment. But did they get punished according to what was said? The law said, on the day that you eat from this tree, you will die. Did they? No, they didn't. 
So that was, and maybe you're right, therefore. Yes, exactly. You may well be right. So we should go to Rav Bick and say, no, we need not Avram. You may well be right. That's a very, very good explanation uh, because it fits. It fits with Avraham. Um, Rav Bick goes on to tell us that which Paul got to at the end, uh, be at the beginning of the end, uh, which is that this bracha is actually not about God. It's about us. So the Avram bit fits better with the ending there, but 100% agree that, that that's a nice explanation of Kavari Shona. Mm -hmm. Ah, we'll, yes, we'll come to the Aseret Yemei Tshuva, and it may be in the Aseret Yemei Tshuva, and this is what Rav Bik says, actually. Rav Bik says that in the Aseret Yemei Tshuva, when we change the end of the bracha, we change the whole meaning of the bracha. Bidiuk, exactly as you've said. So uh, we'll go along with Rav Bik for the moment during the year, Right, and then we'll come back to the Aseret Yemei Tshuva uh, later on. So, Hashiva Shavdena Kavari Shona. It's, you know, we're talking nostalgically here, aren't we? That's how it seems to us. Restore our judges. You know, it's a bit like Hashivenu Elech of a Nashuva. Chadesh Yameinu. Get him. What does that mean? Renew our days. As of old. What does Kekedem mean? What is Kedem? The beginning. Oh, the beginning. Yeah, grape juice. Beginning. Yeah, Kedem is grape juice. What about Ke Kedem? Like Kedem? The beginning. Well, Kedem. The beginning. Yeah, but what, what what does it mean? If I said to you Kedem, previous, it does all mean all of those things, but it also means east. Well, Kedem is east. Yeah, Kedem is east. What's he talking? When we say Chadesh Yameinu Kekedem, what are we saying? Renew our days. It's in like... Babylon. Babylon. Where were we in Kedem? No, not in Babylon. Babel. In Gan Eden. Oh, Gan, Eden. Gan Eden. Kedem. What do we yeah. say in Sheva Brochers? Yeah? Gan Eden. Frank, give us a song. <coughs> Gan Eden mi Kedem. Thank you. Yeah. Gan Eden mi Kedem. When we say Kedem, we're referring to Gan Eden. So um. when we say Chadesh Yameinu Kekedem, which we will eventually get to after we finish the Amida, we get to take it out of the Sefer Torah and then putting it back, we will get to Chadesh Yameinu Kekedem, and Kekedem means Gan Eden. Um, so how did we get to that? I don't know. Um, so, um, the Brach, well, yes, well, we got to that Gan Eden, Gan Eden from, from, from Frank's comments. Yes, Johnny? I just said, is it in the east, Gan Eden? Where, it's like, where it is. is it? Gan Eden is in, is in the east, where, yeah, Mesopotamia, where the four rivers ah, meet. Okay. Right. Yeah, where the four rivers meet. So, um, restore our judges as of old, either Abraham, maybe the Kaddish Baruch Hu, maybe the Sanhedrin, maybe Shoftim, maybe Moshe Rabbeinu's lot, and, and our, or maybe God, yes, yes. The Haser Mimenu Yagon Va'anacha. Now, this bit does not fit in. It's possible because always there is still the chance. So you don't have to restore him. No, we say restore him, we say restore us. Restore our judges to the level of his justice, um, in which, in Frank's example, is tempered with chesed. So I, I'm buying it. I'm buying what Frank says. I like it. But I don't like this bit. The haser mi menu yagom vanacha. And remove from us sorrow and groaning. Have you been to court in that? Have I been to court? Yes, I have, actually. I was a witness in one case. No, have you got a key? Your key? No, I haven't, thank God. Well, God forbid that you should ever need to, but there's a lot of you have gone. Yeah, I'm sure there are. I don't think that probably means, I don't think that really probably is what it means. Um what removed from us sorrow and sighing? What has that got to do with justice? Ah, okay, right. So why, why, why are we groaning and sighing? Because we haven't got the justice like it was. Okay. What when? What at first glance? At first glance, you might say, remove from us sorrow and anguish. 
because um, we've just been convicted and that's why we're groaning. But that wouldn't be justice, would it? So, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, let's not go there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, so the uh, so that's why yes yeah, so that's why we we it, it's we have sorrow and and groaning because of the uh, the failure of our current just ju judges to be uh, yeah to be um, now we also we also have to find don't we we also have to find uh, our source pasuk. Yeah, every we so far we managed to find a source pasuk uh, for um, for every bracha. Remember, we had the Rafa'enu one. That was the one that was really dead obvious. The, this one is also just as obvious as the Rafa'enu one. Remember, the Rafa'enu one was um, um, a Rafa. What was it? Um, Rafa'eni ve Rafa. I re, re, heal me, and I will be healed. Was Turned into Rafa Enu Venerafe. So uh, you won't know it. Um, so don't even uh, bother looking unless Ruby was here. He would know it. It's from Yeshayahu. It's from the first chapter. Let me get it on the screen for those who are uh, watching this. It's the first chapter of Isaiah. Yeah, I'll tip of your tongue, Charlie. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so. Uh, uh, were Ruby to be here, he would have tell us exactly where it was. It's chapter 1 and verse 26. I shall read it to you. Look inside at our bracha whilst I read you what the pasuk is, and you will see that it is, thank you, Jonathan, that it is a direct copy. Um, verse 26. And I will restore your judges as at first. And your counsellors as at the beginning. Okay, is that, uh, is that a copy enough for you? That is clearly the source that, thank you, Jonathan. Right. That is clearly the source that the Anshay Knesset Agdola used for this bracha. So, what do we do normally when we get this pasuk? We go and look at the context of this pasuk to give us a little bit of background context for our bracha. So what is he talking about here? He's talking about um, uh, after, oh, well, let's go back first of all, a few psukim to verse 21. This is a pasuk that you will be, um, you will be familiar with. Um, and if you are not familiar with it, it means you have not been paying attention because this is the Haftorah of... First chapter of Isaiah is the chapter uh, Haftorah for when? The opposite. Oh, okay. It is the Haftorah of Hazon Yishayahu. That's very good, Paul. Let's have a look at the beginning of chapter one of Yishayahu. It begins. How does Yeshayahu begin? Chazon Yeshayahu ben Amutz, Asher Chaza al Yudat said in the Eicha tune. Chazon Yeshayahu ben Amutz, Asher Chaza al Yudat. Yeah. Um, the vision that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Yehuda and Yerushalayim, and then he goes into the dirge of what he saw. In the with the coming destruction. This was the prediction of the destruction of Jerusalem, which is why it's the Haftorah of Chazon Yishayahu, which is the Shabbat before Tisha B'Av. Okay. So, Chazon Yishayahu. And within that uh, Haftorah, verse 21 of the same chapter, is a Pasuk, which you will all be familiar with. Eicha Haita Lezona Kirya Neemana. How is the faithful city become a harlot? Mileti Mishpat, she that was full of justice, Sedek Yalinba, righteousness lodged in her, Veata with an ayin, and now Muratzchim. Now it's full of murderers. That Pasuk is, is the encapsulation 
of what Tisha B'Av is all about, and that's in the Haftorah of Chazon Yishayahu before Tisha B'Av, how the faithful city, meaning Jerusalem, which was full of justice and full of righteousness, is now become like a harlot and is full of murderers. And you can see that pasuk there links in to uh, our bracha, because it talks about tzedek and mishpat. I'll read you the verse again. Mileti mishpat tzedek yalin ba. It was full of mishpat, just justice. Tzedek yalin ba. Tzedek lodged there. Yalin means to, to stay overnight. To yeah. Same word, by the way, as bet malon, a hotel. Because what do you do in a hotel? You sleep overnight. Wait. Okay. So um, that is a few psukim before um, our copy pasuk, if you like, or our source pasuk, we'll call it. Now, when we come to the source pasuk, by this time, Yeshayahu's given us his dirge for the first 20 odd psukim. And it then comes to verse um, um, 24. So the first 23 verses are all about the destruction of Jerusalem, how Jerusalem is solitary and it's uh, full of murderers and all the things we've just said. Verse 24, Yeshayahu turns it, it, the, the idea around and he says, Lachain, therefore, Ni'um ha'adon Adonai Tzva'ot. So says the master Hashem of hosts, Avir Yisrael. Avir Yisrael means the mighty one of Israel. Hoi. Ah. Hoi means ah. Enachem mitzarai. Enachem. I will comfort. Same word as nachamu. Nachamu, nachamu ami. Enachem mitzarai. I will comfort. Sorry. Yeah, it means comfort. It also means to nach. Uh, it also means uh, he translates it here as avenge, but that's nikama. Yeah, so console is a better translation. I will be consoled, mitzarai. When you're worried about your troubles. Troubles or tsar is an enemy. Ish tsar v'oyev. Haman hara hazeh. Ish tsar v'oyev. This wicked enemy person. Tsar means an enemy. I will be. Comforted from my enemies, the inakma me oivai, and I will and avenge them. from my from my enemies. Vashiva yadi alayich, and I will return my hand unto you. This is God speaking through Yeshaya about Israel. I'll return my hand on you. The etrof kabor sagayich, and I'll take away your dross. What is dross? Yeah, it's the stuff that's no good. So. The, 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 do you know what the origin of the word dross is? Metal. Yeah. That's right. Dross, the, it's become, in, in common parlance, it's become meaning, you know, rubbish. But actually, the original is exactly as Hannah has said. It comes from the smelting of silver, actually. The dross was the impurities when you, when you, uh -huh. you melt silver and you purify silver. The stuff that you take out that's not silver um, is called the uh, the dross. So I'll take away your dross, with meaning I'll take away all the people that have that have, uh, that have been bad to you. But Asira and I will um, I will remove. Uh, it's another type of word for this for rubbish. And now our pasuk, the next one is and I will return your judges as they were originally. So he's talking about the judges of Jerusalem, right? Because he's talking about after the destruction of the temple, eventually, he says, God will come back and return to us and will return to us our judges as they were previously, meaning in, in Jerusalem. So here... Our pasuk here is talking about, in some ways, the restoration of society. What was what was the problem? What was the problem that caused the um, caused the destruction of the temples? Second one, Sinat Chinam. First one said to be Avodah Zarah. Um, however, have, however, yes, yes. However, if you look 
in the book of Zechariah, you will see there that actually, although the Gemara tells us that the main reason that the first temple was destroyed was because of idol worship, Zechariah says something differently, or God says something differently through Zechariah. What happens there, I think it's chapter 7, if I'm not mistaken, is this. Zechariah had gone back to Israel from Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the temple. The Jews had been exiled to Babylon, Al-Neharot, Babel, by the rivers of Babylon. We sat and we wept. Uh, we wept, we wept. Uh, um, that's where we were. And then a group of people with Ezra, Nehemiah, Zechariah, went back and started the rebuilding of the second Beit HaMikdash. But it was a poor effort. And it, but it, was, it started. The Knackers stayed in Bavel. Mm -hmm. Only about 15% of the people returned to the land after the destruction of the first temple. And it was the poor people. The, the ones that had done very nicely in Chutzla Aretz stayed there because it was very nice for them. Yeah? Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. They did send money. But they also sent a question to Zechariah. They said to Zechariah, should we fast on Tisha B'Av this year? Because we're rebuilding, or you're rebuilding the second temple. So why, if we've got a second temple, why should we be crying over the destruction of the first temple? It's a fair question, no? You know what Zechariah's answer was? Zechariah's answer was, I'll go and ask God. Good cash, he says. Goes and asks God, and God says, I never asked you to fast. Well, you fa who are you fasting for? Not fasting for me. I never asked you to fast. He says, well, I'll tell you something, he says. I'll tell you what you should do. What you need to do is listen to the first prophet. And it says that. Go and listen to the first prophets. Who are the first prophets? First prophets were these lot. Yeshayahu, um, Yirmiyahu. Yechezkel. These are called the Rishonim, the, the Nevi'im Rishonim. And what were they going on about the whole time? Tzedek Mishpat. He says, Zechariah says, the word of God, and he says, I don't care whether you fast or not. It's irrelevant. But I'll tell you something else. If you don't go back and listen to what the original prophets told you, it will all happen again. You can build a second temple, but it will all come crashing down unless you listen to those first prophets. And he quotes there, the psukim, what did the first prophets say? You have to be kind to the widow, the orphan, and the poor, social justice. And so it's clear from Sefer Zechariah that the destruction of the temple was as a result of a failure of society. And that's why... The bracha, the, your point uh, about it being about us, it, it comes in. Because the bracha is about society. It's about just. It's not about God's justice for us. We're not asking God to be just to us in this bracha. What we're asking is God's help to restore society to the way it was. Now, it fits with Rav Bik because Abraham was the first one to bring in this concept of, of being kind and looking after the vulnerable, the, the, the stranger. He was the one that did chesed to these strangers that came. They were turned out to be angels. He didn't know that. He went running off to help them. He prayed for these people. He didn't know who they were in storm. He just knew it wasn't right that there was the, the, the people would be, uh, righteous people might be killed. Abraham was the first, as it were, to, to, to detail and to and to make it his life's work, said the Kumishba, righteousness and uh, and an appropriate justice. So, the fact that the Anshe Knesset Gedola has chosen a bracha which mimics our pasuk here in Yeshayahu, which clearly is talking about social justice, means that this bracha must be about social justice, and it fits actually with. The um, it fits actually with the end of the bracha. Remember, we always said 
that the Khatima, the end of the bracha, where it says Baruch Atah Hashem, that, that is what? It's the essence encapsulates. Good word, Jeff. It encapsulates the bracha. Now, it does not say Baruch Atah Hashem HaMelech HaMishpat. Blessed are you, our God, the King who does justice. Or it doesn't say Baruch Atah Hashem HaMelech Ose Staka O Mishpat, who does justice. It does in the in the 10 days of Tshuva. We'll come back to that in a minute. But in the all year round, it says Melech Oheiv Staka O Mishpat. You are a king who loves Staka O Mishpat. He loves the fact that we will have a society of Tzedek and Mishpat. So this bracha is a bracha, a request. Remember, we're in the, the bakashot. We're in the requesting section of the Amida. This is a request for God's help for us to make a society fit to live in this world, a society of, of tzedek and mishpat, a society where there is justice for those who've been wronged, where there is righteousness, where there is chesed, where there is rachamim. So now you can see how the chesed and rachamim fit in this bracha. Because what we're not after is strict din, to use Hannah's word. We don't want strict din. We don't want Shylock and his pound of flesh. Right? What we want is tzedek. Mishpat, mishpat we want. You can't have anarchy. You have to have rules. We've had, we were talking about that in the in the Pirkeavot Shir, weren't we? You can't have a, a situation where you've got no, no rules. You've got to have rules in society. You've got to have law enforcement. But you want law enforcement, which is tempered, to use Paul's word, with chesed, with rachamim, with tzedek. First of all, you want it to be righteous, Okay. You don't want overzealousness. You want righteousness. And then at certain times, you also want chesed and you want rachamim in, in a society which is going to be good. Yes, Warren? So does that mean you actually want God to help all Jewish judges they rule by the justice? Okay. Okay. So we want to help Jewish justice. I'll just repeat that because they won't have heard it on the screen or on the recording. Warren's quoting from the art scroll that says, uh, we are praying for Jewish judges. Say that again, Warren. God to help Jewish judges to rule wisely and justly. So God to help all Jewish judges to rule wisely and justly. Okay. I think it's a bit narrow, uh, but I can't argue with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, well, sentiment. with sentiment, that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> However, uh, what I thought you might be going to say um, is that um, we are praying for uh, pure Torah law. Uh, and now we've had this discussion uh, uh, recently. <laughs> I can't remember in which forum. Uh, I think it was in the in the Sanhedrin Shia, <laughs> where um, we 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 learned about the uh, um, the ability or even the the obligation of the Sanhedrin to force people to do mitzvot. Now, we spoke about it in some detail in that form. I'll just summarize it. You might think that in a Torah society, if you were to break a Torah law and do something you were not meant to do, so I don't know, let's say you ate treif, okay, or you broke Shabbat, that there would be the appropriate punishment as detailed in the Torah. And you would be right. But there's another element that you might not know about. And that is, according to the Gemara in Sanhedrin, at least, the Bet Din in a pure Torah uh, run society can force you not only not to do things you shouldn't do, but to do things that you should do. So, for example, if you do not want to shake a lulav on the first day of Sukkot, the base din can send round the heavies and beat you up until you agree to do it. And literally beat you up till you agree to do it. That is how the pure Torah society no, is, de is described, yes. And that's not what we're talking about here. No. That is not what we want. That's not what we're praying for. So I, I'm pleased that you read that out, uh, Warren, the whole thing, because I thought you were going to uh, say that we're praying. That was for, too much like Sharia law. 
Yeah, like Sharia law, that's correct. Uh, uh, and, and that's not the kind of society that we envisage, uh, although um, um, there will be some people who do envisage that, but it's not the kind of society that I think that any of us or anybody listening to this or either here on Zoom or on the recording is likely to want to live in. So the, the kind of society that we want to live in is this kind of society that is personified by Abraham Avinu, is personified by a Kaddish Baruch Hu's, uh, um, a Kaddish Baruch Hu's style of justice. What do we say about Kaddish Baruch Hu? He is Malay Rachamim. He's full of mercy. And that's how we want a merciful society. Now, merciful society doesn't mean that there are no rules. It doesn't mean that you never get punished for That's not mercy. That's, you know, if you've got a, a, a child, you know, and you never, ever punish the child, that's not clever, right? That's not doing him any favours. We're talking about justice tempered with chesed and rachamim. Uh, that's the society we want, where the vulnerable, the social justice aspect of society that, that Yishayahu is, is telling us and that Zachariah, or that Hashem via Zachariah, is telling us go back and try and get uh, and re re emulate and emulate and and renew. That's what we're asking for. So now, if we go and look at our bracha in the whole, now we've answered most of our questions. Hashiva shoptenu kvorishana, restore our judges as at the beginning, which could be either Hakadosh Baruch Hu's style of justice or Abraham's style of society that Abraham foresaw, which was kindness to everybody. And our counsellors, those who advise us, like at the beginning, who were the ad advisors? Who were the original advisors? They were, that was the, the, the rabbis, the koanim, the rabbis, they were the ones that you went to for advice. Now we can fit in that as well, can't we? Remove from us sorrow and sighing. Who might be sighing and feel sorrowful? People who have uh, who are who are caught in a system. People who are unfortunate. We've seen it. You don't have to look very far in society to see that never there are people who are just. I mean, I'm seeing this all the time in, in the work that I do. One of the firms that I work for has a. Um, a, 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 a contract, as it, no, it's not a contract, but a lot of their clients are prisoners in prison. And um, they, they, the prison medical service isn't great. And so there's a lot of negligence that goes on there. Uh, and I get to make reports on that. But one of the things I have to do is I have to read through people's medical records. And almost without exception, when I read through these prisoners' records, you read through it and you think, this kid never had stood a chance. Never stood a chance from day one. You know, you can see from a very early age, social services, broken families, drunken father, you know, mother pregnant by the seventh man. And, you know, you just know it from the, from right from the start. You could look at the first five, six years of their medical records and you know where it's going to end. And I can't tell you, it's almost without exception. And, you know, your heart goes out to these people. They've done all sorts of things that are wrong. But they're, 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 they're victims of society. They're the people who are groaning and sighing. And society is groaning and sighing because of the things that they end up doing. Um, and they end up, where do they end up? They end up having to be put in prison. Uh, and, and, and that, I think, fits in there. Remove from us this groaning and sighing of the vulnerable, of the people who are not treated properly and are not treated well, and who, when we have a failure of, of society, the victims. So that's what, I mean, only the real victims as opposed to, you know. Uh, Art Scrove says Yagan is like an actual pain. You know, when you see something, you lose somebody or something like that. And the other words, it's like an inner pain. The groaning is an inner pain, like even depression or worry, things like that. But what does the, what does the Art Scroll tell us that that refers to? Does it, does it tell us what kind of, who, who are these groaners and sires, according to Art Scroll? It doesn't actually say who they are. Okay. Does that say do you have anything in the in the sax? Um, well, the quoting the quoting the Vilna Gaon who said that. The pain of the people who have known the full precariousness 
as being dependent on the goodwill of others. There you go, exactly. Rabbi Sachs, say that again loudly, Barbara. I can't possibly um, uh, paraphrase it. The complaint of a people who have known the full precariousness of being dependent on the goodwill of others. In other words, the vulnerable, the weak. Um, mm. That's the, the groaning and the sighing. Remove, it's saying, remove those groans. Remove the need for these people to groan and to sigh. Why? Because if we've got a just society, there won't be any of these people who are dependent on the, the goodwill of others. Um, the, and then... Uh, um, I asked that question in the beginning. What does it mean? It means to 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 um, vindicate us um, with with justice. To vindicate us means how do we get vindicated? How do you get acquitted if you haven't done anything wrong? So get us to a situation where we are vindicated. In other words, help us have a society whereby. We are proud to have that society, proud to be part of that society, and are having our eye out for the weak and the vulnerable. You've heard me say this millions of times. The, the, most, the most repetitious mitzvah in the Torah is to look after the stranger. I have to say, yeah, in one way or another, 36 times it's mentioned in the Torah. That's what the Torah is about. It's about looking after those who are not uh, 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 not as fortunate as us. That is one of the main parts. And then the end, like we said before, Aruch Atah Hashem, blessed are you Hashem, Melech, the king, Ohev, who loves us to be full of staka and mishpat. Now, just the last couple of minutes, fast forward to the 10 days of tshuva. Sterek, you made tshuva. We change the end of that bracha, don't we? What do we say? Aruch Atah Hashem, HaMelech HaMishpat, blessed are you Hashem, the king of justice. A completely different meaning. The bracha is completely different. Did you ever think, I, I didn't think of this, Rabbi, Rabbi Bick asked the question and he's given us the answer now. When we change the bracha of Akela Kadosh, we understand why we're changing that, because he's the king now. In the 10 days, he's the king. So he's not the holy God, or he's not just the holy God, he's the holy king, because we're stressing his kingship. But the ordinary bracha of the year has already got a melech in it. So what's the big deal? that we change it. But now we understand what our bracha is about during the year. It's not about God as the king. It's about us making a society fit for a king, if you like, fit for a Jewish nation. Come the 10 days of tshuva, and it's rather clever because it changes a couple of words in and it changes the entire meaning. And it means that we recognize that this time of year, we're especially recognizing that God is the king who meets out justice and that's what we're in, uh, uh, and, and we're therefore asking during the 10 days of Tshuva, the meaning of the bracha is completely different. We're asking God to be full of chesed and rachamim and to take away our groaning and sighing. It's amazing, isn't it? That, 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 that when, you, when you understand what the, the bracha is like, is meant to be about during the year, that it is completely on its head during the Aseret Yimei Tshuva. Uh, uh, and and uh, without understanding what it was right in the first place, you can't get anything out of that 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 change uh, for the Aseret you made Shuvah. So I thought that was really uh, a, an amazing insight into that bracha. Uh, and I don't know about any of you, I had no inkling uh, really of what that was all about. I just said the words like everybody else three times a day. Uh, um, and, you know, <laughs> Uh, my sins I recognize today uh, that we now we need to do them properly. And as Johnny Halpin says, if you do it properly, it'd take you hours. Okay, first of all, I'll just ask if there's any questions in the room first before we go to Zoom. Comments, the comments go on. Um, nice and loud, please. We're talking about justice. Um, today, on Shabbat in the morning, um, you saved the poor man from the stranger. It was from the stranger. Um, the poor and the distant, the destitute from the one who was robbed. The outcry, you, the outcry of the poor you hear, the screams of the destitute you listen to and say, who is like you, which is what we should be aiming for. Well, with this, yeah, I think that, I think that, 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 that's a parallel. 
That is yeah. definitely a parallel. Yes, agree with that. Any other comments or questions? Paul? <laughs> <laughs> good point. <laughs> good point. Because we do actually mention the melech in it. Whereas in the Akela, if you say Akela Kadosh, you have to repeat. You let off because you have actually mentioned the melech. You're right. If it was me, I'd change that rule. But uh, I'm not yet Rosh Sanhedrin. Any questions on Zoom? No, no thank you. Okay, lovely all to see you all. Um, see you all Thank next you, week. Johnny. It's fun to be here. Oh, I'm going away on Sunday. Yeah, probably there will be no shear probably next week because I'm going to England on Sunday. It's at a mishpat, huh? <laughs>